ocean, over the clouds, and around the world. Here comes the wild side of wildlife. The Animal Show! And now, let's have a wild welcome for your furry friends. Stinky and Jake! Now it's the Animal Show! <laughs> Hello, all you little animals out there. I am Jake, and uh, we're Stinky. Oh, here I am, Jake. Oh, Stinky, where have you been? You... In my burrow. That's the underground place where skunks live. Well, yes, but since when do you have a burrow here? Oh, since I found out that today's guests are animals that live underground. Ah, well, that's true. <laughs> the tarantula and the mole do live underground, but what does that have to do with your burrow? Well, I'm going to invite them to do the show down there. They'll love it. But, Stinky, we, we always do the show up by the desk. You can come down too, Jake. But, but Stinky, we... <laughs> well, we'll be right back after this. And now it's time for... That's amazing! Wow, and the way you yell sure is amazing. Thank you. Today's amazing animal is a mole which swims in the sand. What in the world? Oh, it's true. The golden mole lives in the deserts of Namibia. And like all moles, it loves to dig. I can dig it. But even a golden mole can't dig burrows in the soft sand, so instead it just swims through the desert. Hmm, I bet he gets sand in his swim trunks. The <laughs> golden mole of Namibia. Yeah, another one of them animals that digs digging, and it'll make you say, <gasps> That's amazing! Uh, sticky! Uh, Stinky, uh, why don't you come up from your burrow now? We've got a show to do. Well, why don't you come down, Jake? <laughs> no thanks, Stinky. Polar bears don't belong underground. Uh, <laughs> but our next guest does. And here she is, all the way from the rainforest of Venezuela. Venezuela. <laughs> Natasha the Tarantula. Stinky, Jake, it is lovely to meet you. Oh. Very wonderful to be here. Uh, thank you, Bunny. <laughs> yeah, you want to see my bro, Natasha? Well, not right now, Stinky. Mm. Now, oh. Natasha, is it true that tarantula spiders are poisonous? Yes, that's true, Jake. Mm. You, you, you're po poisonous? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, uh, Jane, Natasha, bad time to visit. You know, my burrow's a real mess. I'll just go tidy up. Oh, stinky. <laughs> Do not worry. A poison is only truly harmful to insects. Mm. Look. Oh. Now, what you will see here is a female Goliath tarantula, just like myself. Wow, she's big. Yes, it's true. Goliath tarantulas are the world's largest spider. We can be as wide as dinner plate. Mm. There are more than 40,000 different kinds of spiders in the world. They are all smaller than the Goliath tarantula, but all spiders have much in common. Uh -huh. We have four pairs of legs, eight eyes, and almost all of us spin a web. Now, now why do spiders spin web? Most spiders use a web to catch food, but we tarantulas prefer to go out hunting for our food just like this tarantula here. We crawl along the jungle floor, watching with our eyes, looking everywhere for a delicious dinner. That's a small reptile or rodent or a small bird. <laughs> well, now what happens when you find food? We attack, raising our front legs like so and exposing our fangs. Fangs? Oh. You're welcome. Eh, 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 eh. His little joke. Oh. <clears throat> you see, tarantulas have powerful fangs with which we bite our victims. This is how we inject the venom. Natasha, Natasha, do you ever attack skunks? Yes. Ah! But only if the skunk attacks us first. Oh, oh, well, why didn't you say so? I won't attack you. Good. Natasha, why don't you tell us more about where you live? Yeah, tell us more about living underground. My pleasure. You see, we tarantulas dig a short burrow into the ground, just large enough for us to fit comfortably inside. Do you sleep down there? Yes. It is also where we lay our eggs. Many female tarantulas will spend their entire lives inside their burrow. But, but if you don't leave your burrow, how do they get food? They put a few strands of silk on the ground outside the entrance to their burrow. When an insect or small animal touches the silk, the tarantula goes to the entrance and attacks. Now there's a beautiful close-up. That tarantula is cleaning his fangs. You're welcome! 
<laughs> okay. So tell me, Natasha, do tarantulas have any other way to defend themselves? Oh, uh, yes. We have tiny hairs that cover our body. When one of our enemies attacks, we shoot these hairs at them. Ooh. And if all else fails, we can always go to the safety of our burrow. See? There's a mother tarantula in her burrow. And that's a baby tarantula crawling on the back wall. Oh. But even underground, we must be careful in case we are attacked by our most deadly enemy. And there he is. The Pepsi's wasp. But it's smaller than you. True. But now what makes this wasp so dangerous to uh, tarantulas? It has poison in its sting that can paralyze a tarantula. Oh, it looks like these two are in a real battle. Oh, yes. Watch. This wasp, it will try to lie on the ground so it can sting that tarantula soft on the belly. And, and the tarantula will try to push the wasp away and bite at it with its fangs. Wow. That tarantula was not stung. And that wasp will stagger away in the feet. Ooh. Is it over? Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for coming, Natasha. Yeah, Natasha. Fangs. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Bye. Uh, and now it's time to meet another underground animal, the Maras, on Baby Talk. Okay, so what am I gonna do today? Sit? No. Oh. Stretch. Oh, yeah. That felt good. Nothing like a good stretch. Oh, okay. Now what? Oh, hey. Hey, you guys, you want to do something? Uh, oh, let's go play with Mom. Sure, why not? Hey, Dave, don't bother me, okay? I'm playing statues. I'm not moving. Hey, 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 you. <laughs> Hello. You. -hoo. Hey, you there, Mara. What you doing? I am a statue. I am not moving. Oh, I get it. You're a statue. You're not moving. Is it a game? I love games. Can I play too? Well, uh, the more the merrier. Look, there's a penguin over there playing statues. Where? 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 Uh, over there. Oh, you're a statue. I don't want to play statues right now. No, me neither. Why not? The more, the merrier. Now, Stinky. It wasn't very polite not to let Natasha in your burrow. Yeah, I know, Jake. I apologized. But I promise I'll make it up with our second guest. How will you do that? Send him down. But stick, stick. <laughs> well, before we meet our next guest, here are some other animals that really dig living underground. Set it down, shake it like a stick and you round and round. Take another step and you'll see what I mean. Everybody's thinking it, ain't you seen? Everybody's thinking it, owns I mean. Step straight north, step to the south. Shake it all around like it's in your mouth. Everybody's asking you what it means. Everybody's thinking it, ain't you seen? Everybody's thinking it, owns I mean. And now it's time for Tizzy's quiz. Do you think Tizzy will do the quiz underground? <laughs> Stinky, you'll never get Tizzy to fly around underground. So, Jake, I'm not so sure about that. Hey, oh. come on, Tizzy. <laughs> nice burrow, huh? And the first question for today is, which of these animals lives in a burrow? A gerbil? A rabbit? A puffin? A badger? Give it a think. I'm going to explore. Hmm, let's see. Tizzy's question was, which of these animals lives in a burrow? A gerbil, a rabbit, a puffin, or a badger? Uh, what do you think the answer is, Stinky? It's a skunk. Oh, <laughs> let's see what Tizzy says. And the answer is, they all do. Gerbils, rabbits, puffins, and badgers all live in burrows. Believe it, cause it's true. That's right, puffins live in burrows. Does that surprise you? 
You wouldn't think that a bird would live in a burrow, would you? Puffins don't dig the burrows themselves, but take over old rabbit burrows. Speaking of rabbits, here's one now. Rabbits are very good at making burrows. Of course, this little rabbit hasn't built a burrow yet, but one day she will, just like her mother did. Rabbits make very comfortable burrows for their babies. The mother rabbit will even pull out some of her own fur to make the burrow nice and soft for her babies. Badgers are nocturnal animals, which means they come out at night. They live in burrows called sets. Up to 100 badgers will live in a set, and badgers sometimes share their sets with rabbits and foxes. Badgers eat berries and slugs, frogs, and sometimes even rabbits. Badgers are very tidy, and they change their bedding regularly. Badgers can live for up to 30 years, and their sets are handed down from generation to generation. This gerbil lives in Mongolia. It digs its own burrow and lives with a lot of other gerbils. Gerbils are social animals that like being together, just like bees. Bees sing, yo! And now it's time for Yves Saint Laroche. Bonjour, bonjour, my petit animal. Today, I will show you how to cook a meal on the ground. First, the bad news. When you cook underground, dirt keeps falling in your food. <laughs> but the good news is that all your ingredients are dirt cheap. <laughs> Everyone's a critic. Come, and I will show you how we cook underground. All you need is a little dirt, a little water, and stir, stir, stir. Of course, in Australia, you stir in the other direction. And voila, you have mud. And what can you make with mud? A mud pie. And what does a mud pie taste like? With dirt. Oh, well, remember, it is better to wash dirty dishes than to eat dishes made of dirt. <laughs> Bye-bye. And now it's time to bring on our next guest. He's already here. He is? Yeah, he's down here underground. Where oh. else would you find a mole? <laughs> well, from the woodlands and grasslands of the world... World. ...to the burrow beneath my feet, here is Morley the Mole. Hi, Jake. Oh, and this is a very nice burrow you have here, Stinky. Very nice. Uh, who dug it? It's a rental. Oh, yeah, it, it's very fine workmanship. And believe me, we moles know all about digging underground. Say, how are you two gonna watch the film Morley brought? Oh, don't worry, Jake. I've got it all figured out. A periscope. A periscope? Unbelievable. Rent it. Roll, Phil. You see, we moles don't see that well, but then we don't have to because we spend Ooh. almost our entire lives underground, digging. Are those molehills? Uh, that's right, Stinky. Molehills are just extra dirt from the tunnels we dig. Whenever you see a molehill, there's been a mole digging down below. Wow, that mole's in a hurry. Where's he going? He's looking for food. You see, we moles can't smell or hear any better than we can see. We have to find our food the good old-fashioned way. How's that? We have to bump into it. <laughs> ah, escargot, my favorite. Oh, fascinating. All right. I can't believe I'm talking to a periscope. Uh, uh, do you bump into anything besides food when you're underground? Oh, yes. Take a look. When moles are digging along underground, we bump into all kinds of things. Other animals, tree roots, but one of the worst things a mole can bump into is an other mole. Whoa, those two moles really don't like each other. Oh, it's not personal. You see, we moles are solitary animals. Solitary? What does that mean? Well, it means that moles would rather be left alone. That's why each mole digs his or her own set of tunnels to live in. Of course, sometimes when we're digging, we run into each other. And we can keep running into each other over and over again just like these two. Will moles fight with each other? Well, we'd rather not. We try to avoid each other at all costs, but if another mole won't leave us or our tunnels alone, we do battle. And it could be quite a mess. Moles may not look tough, but we have sharp teeth and big, heavy claws, and we can do a lot of damage. Uh, of course, most of the time, we use our paws and claws for digging. Mm. Dig, dig, dig. That, uh, that's what we're born to do. Wow. Go ahead, Stinky. Take oh, a look. Okay. 
Those are young moles still in the underground nest. They look very comfortable. Oh, they are. Baby moles love it underground. You see, we're born to dig. Even as youngsters, we moles have big paws and sharp claws. Well, now how long do these babies stay in this underground nest? Well, usually until they're about six weeks old. By then, we're ready to start digging our own tunnels and looking for our own food. Yeah, there's nothing quite like digging your first tunnel and bumping into your first meal. It's a good life being a mole. Uh, we live to dig and we dig to live. Hey, that sounds like a song. Oh, right. I and I'm on my way to sing it. Oh. <laughs> well, here's Morley the Mole with Live to Dig and Dig to Live. Digga, 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 digga. Digga, 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 digga. I live to dig. I dig to live. I give it all the time I gotta give. It's plain to see a mole won't need a shovel or a spade. When you get a look at how my front two feet are made, I wanna dig. I gotta dig. I wanna dig a hole, I want it big. So when you see another pile of birds upon the lawn, have to take and celebrate another holy boy. I live to dig, I dig to live. I give it all the time I gotta give. When you meet an obstacle, you take it in your stride. Simply hang a left or right and dig around the side. I wanna dig, I gotta dig. I wanna dig a hole, I want it big. Now there are lots of people who will try and dig the dirt. Here's a well-known fact on which a guy could bear his shirt. There may be other animals who try to dig a hole, but no one does it better than the poorly sided, furry coated, worm devouring, quite devoted, often hidden, highly noted, living, digging mole. I gotta dig. Otherwise, my little nails get so loud. I scratch myself. Oh, that smiles. Great song, Morley! Uh, thanks, Stinky and Jay. I I'll see you now. Dig you later. <laughs> <laughs> Are you gonna stay down underground, Stinky? Yep, I may never come up. Okay. And now it's time for Animal Awards. Woo, I wanna see this. <laughs> it's time for today's Animal Awards. Today's Animal Award is for the biggest spider. Mm. Is it the red knee tarantula? Mmm, is it the Goliath tarantula? Or could it be the Desert Tarantula. Mm, and the winner for World's Biggest Spider is... The Goliath Tarantula! Blue. It's as big as a dinner plate. Mm, there goes my appetite. Congratulations, Goliath Tarantula! Yeah, way to go there, Natasha. <gasps> and now it's time for Jake's Tale. Ooh. I thought you were gonna stay underground. And miss a Jake's Tale? Oh. Never. Thank you. <laughs> well, don't just sit there and read. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, today's story is about a tarantula and a coati. Coati? Yeah. Once upon a time, there was a tarantula named Tatiana. One day, she was sitting in the sun, minding her own business, when she heard Clegg Coati snurfling nearby. I think I'll just sneak away before he sees me, she said. But too late. I see you, said Clegg. Where you going? Don't you want to play? No, said Tatiana. Go away. And she shook one of her eight legs angrily in Clegg's direction. Go away and leave me alone. And then she did. I found you, said Clegg. Now I'll hide and you come find me, okay? But Tatiana didn't want to play. She just wanted to be left alone. Okay, then let's play tag, said Clegg. You're it. He wanted Tatiana to chase him, but she wouldn't move. She got so angry, she even flicked hairs in Clegg's face. Do that again, said Clegg. He wanted Tatiana to throw some more hairs so he could catch them, but Tatiana ignored him. Finally, Clegg Coati gave up. I'll go find someone else to play with. And he left. And Tatiana sat happily in the sun all by herself. The end. Whoa, nice story, Jake. Well, hey, yeah. Jakey. Okay. Bye-bye, <laughs> guys. Well, Jake, time for me to go back underground. Uh, uh, but what about the rest of the show? Mm, see ya. Have you noticed that he never listens to me? Oh, don't you think it would be such fun living underground? Oh, boy, I'm struggy wongy Don't call me strongy wongy And no, I do not. Oh, sorry, Armstrong. Yeah. But wouldn't it be great living underground? Birdie, wordy, wordy. Birdie, wordy, wordy. Don't call me strongy, wongy, or birdie, wordy, wordy. All right? And, and no, I don't like living underground. Why not? What? 
Because I'm not a mole or a tarantula. I am a chicken hawk. I hate being in closed places. Then you'll love where we're going for today's habitat time. Oh, yeah? Where, where is that? Ooh. A cave. A, a cave? Oh, oh, give me a burrow any day. Wow, we sowie. Look at all the bats. Uh, I'm going to go bats if I don't get out of here. Uh, did you know that almost a quarter of all mammals are bats? Well, I've always had my suspicions. Now can we go home, huh? The cave is no place for a chicken hawk. Ah, uh, but it is the perfect place for bats. Dark, uh, quiet, and undisturbed. Well, then let's not disturb them. Let's go. No. Oh, look, look, baby bats. Oh, aren't they sweet? Look at them. Well, they certainly are pink. Oh, each square foot of this cave wall is covered with up to 500 pink hairless bat pups. Woo, it's a lot of bat babies. Yeah, and you know what else? Uh, Mommy bats give birth to only one baby a year. So, how does a mommy know which baby is hers and versa vice? You know, they, they kind of all look the same. Uh, each mommy can tell her baby by using sound and smell. These bat pups may look the same, but they sound and smell a lot different. Yeah, who would have known? And now can we go back, huh, please? No! Oh, they're so cute! Oh, look at them! Yeah. Oh, oh, oh! Hey, look at this! What are those things? They are threads made by the lava of a type of maggot. Mm. See, see how they shimmer and shine in the dark? Yeah, compared to those bat babies, you know, they're even kind of pretty in a way. Oh, when insects see the glowing lava, they think it's the starry night sky. So they fly up towards what they think is the sky, and, and whoopsie versky, they get caught in those threads. Watch. All right. Do I have to? That moth is going to be that lava's dinner. See? Oh, hey, you know, living in a cave is dangerous. Oh, you know, I got a feeling those bats are after this. Hey, let's get out of here, huh? Oh, boy. It's so nice to be back in the wide open spaces. For habitat time, it's Bunny Bear. And I'm showing the chicken hook. Just back from a cave. And never going anywhere like that again. Why not? Well... A place like that could drive you bats. Ah. Hey, Jake, isn't it time for another quiz? Yeah, but where's Tizzy? Oh, is she still down here? Uh, somewhere. And the quiz question is, can moles swim? I repeat, can moles swim? Give it a think. I'll be back in a buzz. Well, Stinky, do you know if moles can swim? I have no idea. Do you know the answer, Tizzy? I sure do. And the answer is yes. Look at that mole go. Believe it, because it's true. Thanks, Tizzy, for another quiz. And thanks to Bunny, Armstrong, and Eve, and most especially to our special guest, N Natasha? Morley? Uh, Stinky, have you seen Natasha and Morley? Why, well, sure, Jake. We're all down here. Go on, Natasha and Morley, say goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye Jake. <laughs> oh, well, until next time, keep on seeing the world through the eyes of animals. Bye! Bye.